What's going on, Mother Flowers? Welcome back for another MMA Updates, the video blog I'm doing about my journey into the cage. One day, I'm going to be stepping into uh, the MMA cage and actually doing a, uh, a legit fight. And this is about how I'm preparing for it. And uh, there's no set date. I don't, I'm not even close, to be honest with you guys. And a couple of you guys have asked me, because you know that I'm doing this video blog, hey, how's it going? How's the MMA training doing? Um, and so here we go. Let's do another video blog about it. Thank you for asking, by the way. I do appreciate you checking in on me. And I know that, again, I have been absent from the channel, but I'm doing more. I'm teaching less. But by the time I'm all said and done with this in a year, year and a half, however long it takes is how long it takes. Um, I'm going to be a lot more experienced of a fighter in order to deliver a lot better teaching um, to anyone who wants to learn. And I've already, I still have about six clients that I train one-on-one -on -one personally. And I've already started to notice that the quality of information that I'm giving my students is, has exponentially like improved. I can tell that, I can tell that because I see them improving a lot quicker than they used to. And I've always been a decent teacher in the material and the curriculum from gutter fighting, cha -cha -cha is solid but the amount of um fight iq that i have has increased and thusly i'm i'm seeing them develop a lot quicker as um capable individuals when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat and that's a great feeling because i love teaching and i love sharing my passion of martial arts with people who who want to learn about it so let's get into it um so right now, what I'm doing as far as my training goes, I'm in the gym five days a week, Monday through Friday, and I'm in there between two to three hours daily. So what I'm usually doing is doing an hour of grappling and an hour of striking. And then if I'm in there for any longer than that, I'm usually working either with one of my coaches, whether that's my wrestling grappling coach or my um, striking coach. <laughs> And uh, I have a, a coach that specializes more in grappling. His name's Perez. He's been in a lot of professional fights. He's a very good wrestler. And he what he teaches me makes sense, right? So he's kind of like the guy I go to when I need one-on-one -on -one advice for grappling. And then um, Aton is from Israel, cool dude. And uh, he just moved out here to the States about eight months ago. And he's a uh, world champion Muay Thai type dude, well, champion Muay Thai fighter. He, think, he fought for Israel, right? So he um he's very good at what he does as far as helping me understand range and things like this. So I've kind of dedicated one guy to more striking stuff and one guy to grappling. So I'm either training with one of them or I have a buddy of mine with a similar background to mine, actually. He started kind of with Krav and did some grappling and wrestling and stuff. And he actually just got back to Thailand doing a long fight camp out there. And, uh, you know, like I said, he's he's had a couple of fights, amateur fights under his belt now. So I'm helping him prepare for a fight in return. He's helping me prepare for this fight eventually and giving me a lot of really great advice. And so I'm either working with him or one of my two coaches. If I'm in there longer than um, the hour of striking and hour of grappling, I feel great. I really do. I love training like this. And I'm loving the fact that I'm still young enough that my body is holding up, knock on wood and thank you. Thanks to God, honestly. So um, for a little bit there, honestly, um, let me start here. I was on this high fat, very ultra low carb diet, and it seemed to be working well for me, honestly. I felt good. I had energy. And then the weirdest thing, I kind of plateaued. So I went away for Easter um, to visit my family. And uh, I had three days of debauchery where I was like eating whatever I wanted and like not working out at all because I needed it. Like I was, my body was so shot. Like my adrenaline levels were spiked. My fucking body was just like sore. I was sore for three days. I, ne I needed that time to recover. But after I got back, I started, I started up with that high fat, low carb diet again. And for whatever reason, it, I just felt like shit. Um, you know, I started noticing I was getting fucking bloated. And the weirdest thing too is I started noticing like my muscles were rapidly deteriorating. Um, not like in a scary way, but I started to notice how skinny I was really getting like from doing so much fucking cardio. And 
not lifting enough and not eating enough, frankly. Like you would think you'd get enough protein with that type of diet, but I wasn't. So I came back and I just, my energy levels plummeted. My, frankly, I think my T level, my test levels were probably tanking. I wasn't lifting enough. And I went out to a party and I saw this dude that I knew like from before, haven't seen him in a couple of months. And he goes, oh man, I remember you were really into bodybuilding, you know, back then. And I go, fuck. As soon as he said that, it was like, I know, like I look so skinny right now and not even skinny in like a good way. Like my, uh, my midsection was going away for a while and I was like, okay, but then that's whatever, for whatever reason, maybe it was because I did like three days of carbs or whatever. Anyway, I started getting like skinny fat, honestly. Um, and it wasn't good. So I tweaked my diet and, uh, I sat back and I said, all right, it's been fucking a week. I feel like shit. Like my mental state is like not right. Let me add carbs back in and let me bump up the weights once again. And I did that and I'm feeling great again. Um, I just, I honestly, I can't be training so hard for so long every day, especially at this age and not in taking carbs. I just like, you know, like it, I'll get too skinny and I don't want to get too skinny. I want to lose weight, but I also, I'm down at like 191 right now. And if I need to cut to 185 by like actually like sweating it out, I'll be able to do that. It's not the healthiest thing to do, but it's what it is. And I'd rather walk around looking good than walk around looking like a skinny little stick. So that's where I'm at with the diet. It's um, I've added carbs back in. I'm not going crazy with it. No refined carbs, a little bit on the weekend. But for the most part, you know, I'm trying to be cautious and diligent about how much how many carbs or how much carbs I, I do intake, but I'm I'm back at it. Now I'm not eating a bowl of oatmeal in the morning or anything like that, but I am, you know, I'm having a ancient grains wrap with my eggs for an egg taco, or like I'll have a burrito without the rice in it. Like so I I take enough carbs in that it's like my glycogen levels are coming back and I feel good, right? And I have more energy. So that was a long-winded way of saying my tweak my diet. I feel good now. Um now my kicks. So for a while, my kicks were like very low. I had just gotten unflexible. I had just, it happened where like after three years of not doing Muay Thai, my kicks started to suck. I couldn't kick up, like I could hardly kick above somebody's knee and that was depressing. So I've been doing a lot of working, you know, with my coach, working on the bags, doing a lot of kicks. And finally they've gotten a little bit higher now and they've gotten high enough where I'm like not looking like a fucking idiot when I kick. So that's good. My teeps, you know, in other words, my front kicks, they're fine. They're great. They always have been fine. Elbows and knees, I'm good with them. But now those Muay Thai round kicks, they're getting a lot better and I'm improving there. So I feel good with that. And I'm getting to the point where when I, you know, do some light sparring with guys, I can actually get them with a kick, at least, you know, on the upper thigh now, which I'll take it for now, right? Eventually I want to get them higher, but I'm working on it. And I'm, I've got a routine of some stretches that I do to help improve things and some isometric stuff and they're coming along. Um, my technicals are improving. So as you guys know, like MMA is very technical these days. It's not like it was, you know, 10 years ago where it was fucking stand and bang and then somebody fucking, you know, throw somebody to the ground and the ground and pound. Like that was the crude way of doing it, you know, back, back in the day, right? Like, but nowadays, most even amateur fighters are pretty technical about things. So learning my range, right? How to be, you know, inside somebody's range and then come back and stand just outside somebody's range. Things like that, footwork, right? Um, head movement, all of these things are improving for me. They're not, they're not where I want them to be yet, but they are improving and thusly improving me as a fighter. Um, my takedowns are coming along. So as I said, I never wrestled as a kid. Um, I the only takedown experience I have had was from doing jujitsu. And as we all know, anyone who trains jujitsu, even if you're at a good gym your takedowns are not great. Like if you really want to learn how to take a mother flower down, you got to wrestle. So that's what I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of work on my double legs and really just my shots, my wrestling shots. Um, my, my, my grappling coach Paris has got me on a routine of really getting low and doing a lot of good drills where I'm practicing, just remaining low and shooting in. And um, my shot is improving. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to get decent low singles, my high singles and everything like that. Still not very good. I got to do a lot of work, but I'm getting some double legs on guys now. 
which is great. And I have forced myself, and I think it was you, TZ, that said um, that one of your coaches told you the only way to get good at takedowns is doing a lot of takedowns. Well, I've been thinking about that in my head, actually. And so every time I do jujitsu, whether I'm doing gi or no gi, I force myself and I force my partner, my sparring partner, to fucking stand up, at least at first. And um, we try to work takedowns. And I've, I've taken note of the guys who either have wrestled or like to work on their takedowns, and I try to train with them. And... Um, and work my takedowns quite a bit. And even if I get, you know, I used to always, it was always kind of a thing in my head. Like I didn't, you know, nobody likes getting taken down, but um, I'm feeling confident enough now, you know, just in my break balls and, and, and my own abilities, as far as grappling goes, unless I'm going with a crazy fucking wrestler, then I get a, ner a little nervous, but generally speaking, I'm forcing myself to work takedowns and it's, it's helping. You know, I talked to my grappling coach actually yesterday and I was like, listen, like guys keep sprawling and putting their feet back and it's hard, you know, and I'm, and he's like, well, no shit. Like you never wrestled, dude. Like it's going to be hard, but keep working it. You know, it'll, they'll come along. So that's where I am with the takedowns and I'm getting more of them, which feels good. And for me, if like in my jujitsu career, I'm a blue belt with one stripe, but like who puts, you know, too much stock into that um, belt system. But it's a good indication of kind of where you might be at. If I can get a takedown, I'm I'm pretty confident in my ground abilities. If I can get a takedown and get on top, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna do pretty well in the fight. But if I get taken down, it, then it's as you guys know who who train jujitsu and stuff. You go to the ground first. It, it's hard. So I just, I really want to get that takedown. Um, or at least. I want to be able to stand up for long enough and stuff takedowns that like I can kind of like, you know, work some magic as far as some striking shit goes. Um, standing up against the wall or the cage is coming along, but I need to work on it. Um, now I'm getting more subs on blue belts and I don't train like a whole, I used to exclusively train gi. And now I have two days a week where I train gi and I think I'm going to cut that down to one, but I really like um, the the gi classes. I they one of them is an hour and a half, and it does a lot of fighting conditioning as well, and I, it's really good for me. Um, so I don't want to like train too much gi, but it's also a good measuring stick. Of like, all right, this guy is a blue belt, this, and I'm getting more subs on blue belts right now, uh, more than I was. So I'm coming along. And, um, I, like I said, I'm also training on the side with my friend and that's really helping me improve. We're doing a lot of clenching. We're doing, um, a lot of sweeps. We're doing a lot of technical stuff with the footwork and we're just doing a lot of drilling as far as, um, checking kicks and things like that goes. And it's really, really helping me. So I'm encouraged. Um, you know, I started to get really fried. And even over the weekend, I felt just like, you know, I'd go out and then I'd be at the bar at the club at like 12 at night. And usually I'd be fine. I'd start to just, my energy levels would just plummet. Um, I have I had started to notice that like I was almost being like antisocial with people. And I was thinking like, fuck, am I getting hit in the head too much or what's going on? But no, I, I think that, um, I mean, I was just overtraining and my diet sucked and I, I really, I've upped the carbs and I feel a lot better now. I just feel like a new man. I really do. So I'm happy. Um, so I see things improving and especially just, it, it shows you really how important recovery is when you feel like, dude, I should take a rest day. Like at my age, 37, you just need to take a rest day. If you feel like, dude, I need to eat more, like dude, just fucking eat more. Like and if I'm doing that and my diet's on point and my recovery is on point, I know like I can keep going and keep feeling good with it and keep improving. And that's what this is all about is just continually improving. So thank you again, guys, for checking in on me. Um, I hope some part of this was maybe um, educational or interesting to you or anything like that. Uh, I know I enjoy doing these things every now and again because it's a good way for me to measure my own progress as well. And I hope to see you guys um, at some point in person for a seminar, you know, once I, once I win this fight, um, I definitely want to start doing a lot more teaching and I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to try to bump that up, whether it's opening an academy, I don't know because that's expensive to keep the lights on, but you know, I'm going to figure something out so I can get out there and meet more of you guys and, and train some people. And it's important these days, times are getting dangerous out there. So 
Until next time, please remember that you were your first and last line of defense. Hey, guys, check out our uh, website. If you want to learn how to fight like a motherfucking G, we can help you with that. All online training courses are available on gutterfightingsecrets.com. And you know what? Thanks for being part of the GFS family community. I love talking with you guys, whether it's online or offline, and just catching up. All right. Until next time, guys. Cheers, mother flower. Stay fucking dangerous.